Hi, I'm Sombra Wilson, and I'm going to be reading to you from Ahari Mot from the Jewish Publication Society version. Um, it is Leviticus 16, Leviticus 16, 17, and 18. And this actually is an exciting portion for me because um, this is the portion that my daughter did when she was doing her bat mitzvah several years ago. So we've studied it in great depth. And I replace the words, the Lord, with Yehovah when I read. And Yehovah spoke to Moshe after the death of the two sons of Aharon, who died when they drew too close to the presence of Yehovah. Yehovah said to Moshe, tell your brother Aharon that he is not to come at will into the shrine behind the curtain, in front of the cover that is upon the ark, lest he die. For I appear in the cloud over the cover. Thus only shall Aharon enter the shrine with a bull of the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall be dressed in a sacral linen tunic with linen breeches next to his flesh and be girt with a linen sash and he shall wear a linen turban. They are sacral vestments. He shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. And from the Israelite community, he shall take two he goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aharon is to offer his own bull of sin offering to make expiation for himself and for his household. Aharon shall take the two he goats and let them stand before Jehovah at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And he shall place lots upon the two goats, one marked for Jehovah and the other marked for Azazel. Aharon shall bring forward the goat designed by lot for Jehovah, which he is to offer as a sin offering. While the goat designed by lot for Azazel shall be left standing alive before Jehovah to make expiation with it and to send it off to the wilderness for Azazel. Aharon shall then offer his bull of sin offering to make expiation for himself and his household. He shall slaughter his bull of sin offering, and he shall take a panful of glowing coals scooped from the altar before Jehovah, and two handfuls of finely ground aromatic incense, and bring this behind the curtain. He shall put the incense on the fire before Jehovah, so that the cloud from the incense screen screens the cover that is over the ark of the pact lest he die he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger over the cover on the east side and in front of the cover he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his fingers seven times he shall then slaughter the people's goat of sin offering bring its blood behind the curtain and do with it with its blood as he has done with the blood of the bull he shall sprinkle it over the cover and in front of the cover. And thus he shall purge the shrine of the uncleanness and transgression of the Israelites, whatever their sin, whatever their sins. And he shall do the same for the tent of meeting, which abides with them in the midst of their uncleanness. And when he goes in to make expiation in the shrine, nobody else shall be in the tent of meeting until he comes out. When he has made expiation for himself and his household and for the whole congregation of Israel, he shall go out to the altar that he that is before Jehovah and purge it. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and of the goat and apply it to each of the horns of the altar and the rest of the blood he shall sprinkle on it with his finger seven times. Thus he shall cleanse it of the uncleanness of the Israelites and consecrate it. When he has finished purging the shrine, the tent of the meeting, and the altar, the li live goat shall be brought forward. Aharon shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities and transgressions of the Israelites, whatever their sins, putting them on the head of the goat, and it shall be sent off to the wilderness through a designated man. Thus the goat shall carry on it all the iniquities to an inaccessible region, and the goat shall be set free in the wilderness. 
And Aharon shall go into the tent of meeting and take off the linen vestments, and he shall put on that he shall put on when he enters the shrine and leave them there. He shall bathe his body in water in the holy precinct and put on his vestments, and then he shall come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, making expiation for himself and the people. The fat of the sin offering shall turn into smoke on the altar. He who sets the Azazel goat free shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water. After that, he may re-enter the camp. The bull of the sin offering and the goat of the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to purge the shrine, shall be taken outside the camp, and their hides, flesh, and dung shall be consumed in fire. He who burnt them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water. After that, he may re-enter the camp. And this shall be to you a law for all times. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall practice self-denial, and you shall do no manner of work, neither the citizen nor the alien who resides among you. For on this day, atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you of all your sins, and you shall, clean, shall be clean before Jehovah. It shall be a Sabbath of complete rest for you, and you shall practice self-denial. It is a law for all time. The priest who has been anointed and ordained to serve as priest in place of his father shall make expiation. He shall put on linen vestments, the sacral vestments. He shall purge the innermost shrine. He shall purge the tent of meeting and the altar, and he shall make expiation for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. This shall be to you a law for all time to make atonement for the Israelites for all their sins once a year. And Moses did as Jehovah had commanded him. Chapter 17. Jehovah spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to Aharon and his sons and to all the Israelite people and say to them, This is what Jehovah has commanded. If any one of the house of Israel slaughters an ox or a sheep or a goat in the camp or does so outside the camp and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to present it as, a, as an offering to Jehovah before Jehovah's temp tabernacle, blood guilt shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood. That man shall be cut off from among his people. This is in order that the Israelites may bring the sacrifices which they have been making in the open, that they may bring them before Jehovah to the priests at the entrance of the tent of meeting and offer them as sacrifices of well-being to Jehovah, that the priest may dash the blood against the altar of Jehovah at the entrance of the tent of meeting and turn the fat into smoke as a pleasing odor to Jehovah that they may offer their sacrifices no more to the goat demons after whom they stray. This shall be to them a law for all time throughout their ages. Say to them further, if any one of the house of Israel or the strangers who resides among them offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to offer it to the Jehovah, that person shall be cut off from his people. And if any one of the house of Israel or of the stranger who resides among them partakes of any blood, I will set my face against the person who partakes of the blood, and I will cut him off from among his kin. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have assigned it to you for making expiation for your lives upon the altar. It is the blood as life that affects expiation. Therefore, I say to the Israelite people, no person among you shall partake of blood, nor shall the stranger who resides among you partake of blood. And if any Israelite or any stranger who resides among them hunts down an animal or a bird that they may be eaten, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with earth. For the life of all flesh, its blood is its life. Therefore, I say to the Israelite people, you shall not partake of the blood of any flesh.
for the life of all flesh is its blood. Anyone who partakes of it shall be cut off. Any person, whether citizen or stranger, who eats what has died or has been torn by beasts shall wash his clothes, bathe in water, and remain unclean until evening, and then he shall be clean. But if he does not wash his clothes and bathe his body, he shall be bear his guilt. Chapter 18. Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the Israelite people and say to them, I, Jehovah, am your Elohim. You shall not copy the practices of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, or the land of Canaan, to which I am taking you, nor shall you follow their laws. My rules alone shall you observe and faithfully follow my laws. I, Jehovah, am your Elohim. You shall keep my laws and my rules by the pursuit of which man shall live. I am Jehovah. None of you shall come near anyone of his own flesh to uncover nakedness. I am Jehovah. Your father's nakedness, that is, the nakedness of your mother, you shall not uncover. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Do not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is the nakedness of your father. The nakedness of your sister, your father's daughter, or your mother's, whether born to the household or outside, do not uncover their nakedness. The, unnake the nakedness of your son's daughter or of your daughter's daughter, do not uncover their nakedness, for their nakedness is yours. The nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, who has, who has born in, into your father's household, she is your sister. Do not uncover her nakedness. Do not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister. She is your father's flesh. Do not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's flesh. Do not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. Do not approach his wife. She is your aunt. Do not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Do not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is the nakedness of your brother. Do not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, nor shall you marry her, her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter and uncover her nakedness. They are kindred. It is depravity. Do not marry a woman as a rival to her sister and uncover her nakedness in in the other's lifetime. Do not come near a woman during her period of uncleanness to uncover her nakedness. Do not have carnal relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. Do not allow any of your offspring to be offered up to Molech and do not profane the name of your God. I am Jehovah. Do not lie with a male as one lies with a woman. It is an abhorrence. Do not have carnal relations with any beast and defile yourself thereby and let no woman lend herself to a beast to mate with it. It is perversion. Do not defile yourself in any of those ways for it is by such that the, na that the nations that I am casting out before you defile themselves. Thus the land became defiled and I called it an account for, and I called it to account for its iniquity and the land spewed out its inhabitants. But you must keep my laws and my rules, for you do not do any of those abhorrent things, neither, neither the citizens nor the strangers who reside among you. For all those abhorrent things were done by the people who were in the land before you, and the land became defiled. So let not the land spew you out for defiling it, as it spewed out the nation that came before you. All who do any of those abhorrent things, such persons shall be cut off from their people. You shall keep my charge not to engage in any abhorrent practices that were carried on before you, and you shall not defile yourselves through them. I am Jehovah, your Elohim. And that is the end of the Parsha Acharimot.